Hey guys, I am Game Advisor, and today we'll be going over 10 tips to help you get better at super people. Now, some of these tips you may already know, but your friends might not. So if you have a new player that's joining super people and you already knew all these tips, or if you just have a friend who doesn't already know them all, feel free to send them this video in order to help them out. With that being said, the first tip I have for you is the fact that you should be cutting your parachute extremely early whenever you're even remotely near the ground. This can reduce the amount of time it takes for you to get a gun and dramatically change the course of events in the beginning stages of the game. Let's say you drop in, there's another player that's going the same speed. They wait till they actually touch the ground with their parachute. You decide you're gonna cut early in order to get to the ground and get a gun. I cannot tell you how many times I have got down, got the gun, and won the fight before they even had a chance to pick one up and reload simply because all I did was cut my shoe early. So I am telling you, if you want to win fights, go ahead and cut your parachute early as it can make a huge difference as to who is going to win. Second on our list is going to be the fact that you should be redoing your keybinds, at least in most cases. Now, the reason I'm saying this is simply because the default keybinds in Super People are kind of just rough. The buttons are far apart, your ultimate's out of the way to push, you can't lean the right direction when you're trying to shoot, and I'm not going to go into depth as to exactly which ones you should rebind, but I will say one of the most important ones you can rebind is just simply going to be your ultimate. This is just because having it on your mouse, if you have an extra mouse button, can dramatically change whether or not you're able to get it out before you get killed. Personally, I have 12 extra buttons on the side of my mouse, so I don't have an issue with that, but if you have even one extra button, I'm telling you rebind that ultimate. You can also swap your Q and E lean keys so that you can lean one direction while moving in that direction at the same time. If you just kind of play with it with your fingers, it may feel weird at first, but after a while you will get there and it will change your gameplay to make it much, much better. Following that is the fact that you can actually stack your energy bars. A lot of players do not realize this is a thing and it is huge. Let's say you eat an energy bar just before a fight starts. Well, that time it's going to take is a high chance for you to actually die. What you can do instead is go ahead and stack all your attack power or defensive or speed bars in order to create a longer lasting buff. This goes up to 720 seconds. This is also great when you're running from the zone and you've got a long way to run as you won't have to stop to eat a second time. Do keep in mind this will not stack the buff, but will instead just give you a longer duration. So for an example, if say I'm using the speed bar, which gives you about 90 seconds of speed boost, the second one would give me a total of 180 for both of them, then 270 and so on and so forth until I hit the cap. This means my move speed won't be increased and only the duration will. So it's super useful to use multiple bars when you know you might be coming into a fight and you won't have time to use one in the future. Fourth on this list is going to be that you don't want to forget to customize your supply crate. Now there is a lot of argument as to exactly what is the best thing to put in there. You could put in, say, a really high tier gun, a really good set of armor, and all these other things. But personally, if I were the one that was recommending to you what you should take, I would say put in whatever gun that you are willing to actually pay for if you even have one and you're watching this video because they are a pain in the you know what to get. But I also would say do not put any armor in there. This is simply because it is just so easy to get tier 4 armor and it's not worth your gold to spend it on when you could just put extra healing kits or power bars or attachments for guns you know you're going to be using. You could put in, say, a digital zoom scope, which is really liked by a lot of players, so you could bring that. You could bring maybe three of the healing kits so that you get instant heals. Again, we don't want to bring bandages or first aid kits. We want to bring the highest tier of healing simply because they're rarer and they are way more impactful. It is an instant full heal, not a heal over time effect. Regardless of what you decide to do, you can really just put anything in these loadouts. Just make sure you're putting something in there so that if you do decide to use it, you're getting something meaningful and you're not only getting your gun. Alrighty, we are halfway there with our fifth tip for you, which is that you want to be looking for the beams coming out of items in order to decide which ones you want to grab, specifically the yellow beams and the attachments. The way this works is if you don't have an attachment for a weapon you are currently carrying, then that item will have a small white little kind of glowing beam coming out of it. That's indicating to you, hey, this item might be useful to you. 
Now, let's say you want a vertical grip, but you have a different grip in that slot. Well, vertical grips are not going to be highlighted anymore simply because you already have something in that slot. Therefore, if you're looting an area, maybe just put it in your inventory until you actually pick up the grip you want. Otherwise, just keep an eye out for them as it just means, hey, I'm a useful item, you might want me. The yellow beams, however, are useful crafting items. These are kind of like a golden yellow, and these are saying, hey, you may not be able to use me right now, but you should pick me up because you can craft me with something else to upgrade something later on. So if you do see those, make sure to grab those as well. After that is another parachuting tip, and this one is simply that when you're parachuting down, you want to make sure that you dive early and then straighten out towards the end of your parachute. Now, let me explain what I mean here. Obviously, we're going to dive straight down if we're trying to get to the ground quickly. However, when we pull our shoot out, we have two options. We can either hold W the whole time or left shift in order to dive as quickly as possible, or we can straighten out and get a little bit of speed in order to get a little bit more distance. One fatal mistake a lot of players have made is to go ahead and straighten out and then try to dive down. If you do this, you will not be able to dive down as fast as you would have been able to had you just immediately dived from the second you pulled your chute. This can make a dramatic difference in the amount of about three to four seconds to give you a huge advantage when hitting the ground. Then if you pair this tip along with our first parachuting tip about cutting your cord early, you should be able to get to the ground close to about six, maybe even seven or eight seconds earlier than your opponents who don't know these things. And at that point, you could just be shooting up in the air, taking them down while they're still just trying to get to the ground. To clarify one more time, because this is a confusing tip, what you're going to want to do is go straight down. And when you open your chute, because it forces you to hold shift at the start of it. Then when you're at the appropriate height you need, if you have to go a little bit further, then go ahead and level out right when you're kind of where you need to be to be able to get that distance. It'll give you the fastest possible drop time in order to get to the place you want to go. Whereas if you go ahead and glide too early by not holding shift right at the start, when you start to hold shift later to get down, you just can't go down as fast as you would have been able to earlier, which causes people to overshoot and sometimes just get to the ground late and die because of that. Next up is another somewhat parachuting tip, and this one's actually really simple. Just look at the top right to see how many players are left inside the plane or I guess helicopter in this game. The idea here is that you can have a rough estimate as to how many players might be trying to contest something you're going for. If you see all of a sudden you pass a high loot area and about 30 people jump out, that means you probably don't want to jump out to and go towards it. So if you just wait till you're a little bit past whatever objective you want to head towards and then you jump, you'll know roughly how many people you have to contest with but you might hit the ground slightly later, depending on where you're going. I like to use this so that I know, hey, I'm only going to have to contest with, say, three or four people at this high loot area, rather than contesting with, say, 10, 20, or even 30. Next up is just that you need to be using the weapons that you get bonus damage for, whether it be AR damage for some classes, or it just be the damage for whatever weapon you're bringing in within your loot box, you want to be using the weapon that you are going to get bonus damage with. This is a huge amount of damage bonus, and sometimes when stacked with other talents can even add up to say 20, 30, 40, or even 50% damage, which definitely has the ability to decide who will win some fights. If you didn't know, this will always be the talent on the top left of your little talent square box in the bottom right corner, so just open up your inventory and mouse over it, and it will tell you which gun you probably should be looking for. This gun will also be highlighted with kind of like a yellow glow to indicate that, hey, I'm the weapon you're supposed to be using whenever you see it and you're running around. Alrighty, the second to last tip for you today is going to be the fact that when you hit somebody, you'll get a little armor or helmet icon to the right of the number of damage you do. Let's say you hit someone in the chest with white armor. You're going to get a white chest plate icon next to that damage number to indicate that it was a level 1 chest piece. If they had tier 5, it would be a higher color, or if they had tier 3, 4, or 2, they will all associate with the same color they do when they're being worn. So if it's a tier 2, it would be green. If it's a tier 3, it would be blue, if it's a tier 4 it would be purple, and so on and so forth. It also will show you the actual icon, which tells you if you got a headshot or a body shot on them. You'll see a little helmet if you hit them in the head, and you'll see a little chest plate if you hit them in the chest. Alrighty, my last tip for you guys today is the fact that you need to be shooting near people's cover instead of just not shooting. Now, let me explain this. Whenever you're waiting for an enemy to peek, 
you're going to be wasting time that you could be shooting next to them if they don't know where you're at yet. If you're shooting next to them, they might think, oh no, somebody still has line of sight on me. If this happens, then they'll start to rotate around so you can actually get a shot on them. This is extremely impactful at longer distances, which is when it's harder to tell where people are shooting from. When you're close up, this tends not to work as well, but hey, it's mostly a sniper thing, and it is always satisfying to realize that you tricked someone into thinking someone else was shooting at them so that you were able to take them down. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you want to see more Super People content, do make sure to like and comment down below as it lets us know that you guys are enjoying this stuff. Otherwise, I want to give a big shout out to our Platinum and Above members, which include Caustic FPV, Jonathan S., and Jim Phillips. Thank you all once again for watching, I'm Game Advisor, and I'll see you next time.